Hello, beautiful people, legends, rock stars. Lovely to have you here with me. Just going to allow some people some time to come in and uh, and and join me for this uh, broadcast today. So the Liberate Humanity TV show, helping you to become your best self, to clear your limiting beliefs, your limiting decisions, to step into your true power, reconnect with who you truly are so you can live your best life and be the shining beacon that the world needs you to be. That is what I'm here to do. That is what I'm dedicated to do. I do have um, some tough messages today though. I've had a pretty big week of awakenings myself and coming to some pretty big realizations about some shit that I've had going on in my mindset that's been holding me back. So I'm going to share a little bit of that with you today and how fascinating it is, how our brain works and how it creates stories according to our fears, our doubts, our limiting decisions, our limiting beliefs. And we are all a work in progress, always. We are all a work in progress. So it's understanding that this journey never, ever stops. Hey, Arlene, morning. How are you? Lovely to have you here, beautiful lady. Um, and that the work never stops. I've had people ask me, so when, when, do, when is it done? You know, when am I there? What is there? You never get there. It's always, it's, it's a journey that just continues to give. This journey gives and gives and gives and gives. Now, a lot of people, that's cool, a lot of people, um, they just see the struggle. They don't see the gift that is actually um, wrapped around the struggle. They just see the struggle. And I don't mean to diminish the struggle. It can be tough sometimes. But when you change your perception so last week i actually said that the key to the, that entrepreneurial switch is about the way you perceive your your world the way you perceive the world the way you perceive the journey the way you perceive everything that is the entrepreneurial switch the vast majority of people perceive everything through a scarcity and fear and limitation mindset Whereas those who really flourish in life, they see possibilities, they see positivity, they see opportunity, they see the gift in stuff. Even when they can't see the gift, they just they just choose to know that there is a gift. Oh, no sound. Uh, is there somebody else on the line who can let me know if they can hear me? Where's my phone? Hold on a sec. I just want to. Um, I just want to check that I am being hurt. Hold on two sex back now. Ah, oh, okay. Hey, Cheryl, how are you? Lovely to have you here too. Gorgeous. Um, so, um, yes, Cheryl, can you hear me? And Arlene, can you hear me now? Oh, good. Okay. All right. No need to check then. And I will just... Make sure my phone's on silent. Good. Okay. So it's all about the perception. The way we perceive the world is the way um, and interpret what's going on. And when we can see the gift in what's um, what's being uh, what's happening to us, or at least just choose to know that there is a gift there somewhere. We perceive the world differently. We behave in the world differently. We get different results. It's our decisions. That drive our that drive our results, right? It's our behaviour that gets us the results that we have. We change our decisions, we change our behaviour, we change our results. We change our perception, we change our decisions, we change our results. So it's really important that um, in order to change your money story from um, from nightmare to fairy tale and if your money story is a nightmare then you're just like 95 percent of the people on the planet you're fitting in you are you have normalized the struggle and uh and this is something that i was really questioning this week is that is your investment in fitting in and not standing out so deeply ingrained that you have embraced the struggle, the struggle story. 
because everything's a story, right? So whatever, whatever results that you are getting right now, it's because of, it's as a result of the story that you've got going in and here. So what emotional investment do you have in the story? And what are your fears and your doubts and your self-worth issues? So there are three things. There's your fears. It's not safe to have what I want. It's not safe to be all that I can be. I'm not good enough. So this is the self confidence and self-belief piece that you don't believe that you are enough that you are smart enough that you are intelligent enough I'm not good enough this is the self-worth I'm not worthy to have these things that I want and we all have these to some extent hate to be normal says Arlene hi Helena how are you I know look Arlene you know me well we're friends and you know that I'm certainly not one who likes to be normal but there is a part of me that still yearns to fit in because of my history bullied at school all the rest of it bullied at school because I stood out and as an empathic child I didn't understand any of this when I was six years old I was five and six when I was bullied at school and I didn't understand any of this at the time of course um, but it was so painful to stand out because I was an intelligent kid I was always top of the class and the other kids freaking hated it even at that age it was um, there was a competition amongst the girls that they hated that I was always top of the class and being an empathic child an empathic um, born, a born an empath of course their taunts their verbal bullying um, I just took it so deeply that I chose not to stand out from that point on from about you know a year into the bullying I just my results tanked I became average I was an average student from that point on throughout my whole um, throughout my whole school year up until year 12 I was average should have been top of the class but I chose to be average I put other things as a priority um, over except and this was my story with money as well I chose to be average I chose to fit in I chose to be normal um, normal as in like everybody else because it was too faint painful to stand out now this is something that came up this week because I've hit a plateau again I'm like what the hell so I journaled these are the things these things that I'm sharing with you are the tools that you can use too. it's so much easier when you're working with somebody to discover these things and um, and I highly recommend that and that's why I'm actually just so you know I am running a four-week money mindset mastery breakthrough for 97 Australian dollars uh, if you want to participate in that so that's where I get on live with you and we do EFT tapping and um, and it's going to be in a group so a whole group of us are going to get on for 90 minutes once a week for four weeks and clear your money blocks so I'll share more about that with you at the end if you're interested um, it's so much quicker working through your stuff when you're working with somebody right but um, when I was doing my journaling the other day um, it was just like what I'm what's holding me back from going to the next level it's fear fear of what um, fear of standing out and I'm like, oh really seriously I'm still dealing with that because I know I'm here to stand out in a big way I know that I'm here to help awaken as many people to their truth to their power to their connection with source uh, awaken as many people as possible and um, and my whole fear of standing out is wrapped up in my results with money so I hit a plateau now in order to do what I came here to do I'm building a seven-figure business that's my target but when I hit a plateau I know there's something going on I know there's something blocking me so I do the discovery what is it it's fear it's not self-worth I've dealt with that dealt with that shit a few years ago um, it's not self-confidence I know that I've built that within me and um, so the piece is fear fear of standing out now I'm going to share something with you that is just fascinates me the way the brain works so part of that fear was it came from the bullying at school right it's too painful to stand out however 
when I started doing the tapping on the fear the other day, I realized that I'm brought up being a Catholic. So uh, I was brought up going to church every Sunday and I actually went to a Catholic school. So I went to church more often during the week with the other school kids. We always had, um, we always um, had uh, church mass during the week at Catholic school, obviously it's Catholic school. What else are you going to do? Uh, and this fascinates me. I know in the Catholic Church, and I don't know about other churches. I'm pretty sure other churches use this as well. As well. But, um, and if you're worried about me talking about church, then just hold on to your judgment about where I'm going with this because um, there is an effigy in all the Catholic churches of Jesus Christ on the cross. And that effigy is supposed to be a representation of Jesus' love for us. And in many ways it is. However, as a little girl, all I saw was the horror. And as an empathic child, all I saw was the horror, the torture, the pain, the suffering. I didn't interpret that as love. I interpreted that as brutality. And Jesus Christ was one of our greatest healers on the planet of our time, our time as in, you know, the last few thousand years. So... Um, that's what they did, that his own people did that to him as a healer after all he had done for them. I don't care what you think of the story of the Bible and all the rest of it, but according to scripture, his kindness and what he did for the people and they turned on him and treated him in one of the most brutal ways. So as a healer myself, I'm not comparing myself to Jesus Christ. Please, I haven't elevated myself to that point. God, talk about a complex, a Jesus Christ complex. Um, but as a small child, that representation of one of the most amazing, kindest men to walk the planet and a healer, and that's the way they treated him because he chose to take his message to the world because he chose to speak out because he chose to be a leader amongst men so if they're going to do that to him what the fuck? seriously why would i want to stand out that's what they do to people who stand out and spread a message of kindness and love and peace and and um and healing good lord what kind of psychological impact has that had on so many children around the world who go to mass every single week. The images of the Mother Mary is of her standing in light with a halo, arms open and loving, and, you know, the caring mother, the Virgin Mary, beautiful. All the images of Jesus Christ, pain, suffering, torture, brutality, murder. Ew. So this deeply impacted my psyche. So I'm still working through this shit, by the way. Believe me, I was sobbing on Tuesday working through this stuff and I was talking to a friend and it was still deeply impacting me. So um, the fact, sorry, that's my phone. Um, the fact that this has deeply impacted my psychology around success, around standing out, it actually ends up impacting my money story. I haven't got all this for stuff figured out, people, just so you know. Um, I, I've been working on it for some time, but I haven't got it all figured out yet. And we are always a work in progress. That's what I said in the beginning. We are always a work in progress. So how do you switch your money story? How do you discover those deeply embedded belief systems, fears, doubts? Is it, you know... <sighs> Do you just wake up one morning and you know what it is and you clear it? Not necessarily. It's constant work. And you, there is no such thing as an overnight success. And remember that money is, is um, requires a physical exchange. It's an energy. So there is practical stuff around money. You've got to get the mindset right, the belief systems. You've got to clear out the fears and the doubts and stuff. But then... What, re what is reliant upon your results is the de decisions that you make and the actions that you take. 
I wish I could say that you can sit at home and meditate all day and work in your vibration and clear your fears and doubts and it's all going to land in your lap. But I can't, Ed, I can't teach you that because that's not been my experience. And out of all the successful people that I have been with, and I've spent lots of time in the presence of millionaires and even billionaires, that I have never seen any single one of them who have been sitting at home and meditating and earning billions of dollars. Not one of them. They've all worked hard. And it doesn't have to be... Uh, it doesn't have to be exhausting. It doesn't have to be really difficult. But, you know, Elon Musk, one of the biggest billionaires in the world, he is driven. He is obsessed with creating value in the world. He is obsessed with creating value in the world. And he works hard to build his empire. And he still has cash flow issues, doesn't he? We all know that last year, what is... He lost $2 billion or something. Was it more than that? It was a lot of money. Um, he, the cash flow is king. So cash flow in any business venture. And let's be honest, if you want to be truly, truly wealthy, then business is by far one, not just the most popular, but also the most effective ways to create wealth. It's then what you do with the money that you earn that really matters. So you've got to invest it wisely. You've got to, you know, be able to have strategies around money, wise strategies around money, just going out and spend it. Ain't going to cut it. I know you want stuff. We all want stuff. But how you spend it and what you spend it on is really, really important. So you've got to have really good strategies and structures around your money. So there's multiple pieces. What value do, the, do you offer the world? Um, mission, what's your mission? What's your message? What's your, who, who are your market? What's your mindset? And what's your business model? All of these go into making a highly successful and profitable business. So there's strategies that you need to put in place. You need to understand the game of money. You need to understand the, the landscape of business and how business works. So trading your time for dollars ain't going to cut it if you want to be truly, truly wealthy. Is this making sense? Please give me some feedback. Yes, yeah, Sally, horror and sadness you saw too. Absolutely. Yep. Oh, well, it was, it was a pretty big, um, it was a pretty big moment of awareness for me because I'd never thought about it before. And this is where the subconscious mind, 60,000 thoughts that are just rolling around in the background. When you decide that you're going to step up to the next level and you do the internal work. So we require courage to be able to get to where you want to be. And you know, the greatest courage of all is being willing to do the internal work is being willing to find those dark places and acknowledge them and be with them being with those places of darkness being with those things great i'm glad it's making sense pat so um being being able to go there being able to be with the emotional um the emotional uh difficulty the discomfort, the emotional discomfort. These things are super uncomfortable. I was so uncomfortable on Tuesday. But I knew that in order to break through to the next level, this is what I had to do. So, and what we do is, so many of us, the thing is that money, zero dollars in the bank is only an issue if you don't think there's more money coming in. And we project what might happen um, through our processes and our thoughts. Now, if you are projecting that there's no money coming in, then guess what? No money's going to come in. But if you've got zero dollars in the bank and you're positive, it takes just as much energy to have a positive mindset as it does to have a negative mindset. But if you have a positive outlook and you are solution focused and you go, wow, okay, not ideal, zero dollars in the bank. How do I change that? Elon Musk. So um, if you look at um, Elon Musk with you know, two billion dollars in a hole last year. He doesn't sit back and go, "Well, he might go." Oh my God, what am I going to do? Momentarily, but he doesn't stay there. He might look at his numbers and go, "Okay, this is not going like I planned. This is not ideal." But what he does from that point forward, he can either have 
a negative outlook and project, oh my God, I'm $2 billion. I'm going to, um, I'm going to go out the back door. I'm going to lose everything. I'm going to go bankrupt. He could catastrophize and project that or he could have a positive outlook and go, right, well, this is what got me to this place. I tried things and they didn't work the way I expected them to or I was blindsided by this or this happened or maybe I spent too much money in research and development um, and he's invested. He's invested in SpaceX and Tesla and whatever else the hell else he's got going on and he's managed to create this financial hole for himself, a dip. So cash flow always goes like this. What does he do about it? What he does about it is what is important. Being solution focused will get him out of that hole. So if you are projecting negative outcomes, you're going to get negative outcomes. If you are projecting positive outcomes, I don't care what you think of Donald Trump. You can love him or loathe him. But when he was almost a billion dollars in a hole, in the hole, he never stopped being a billionaire. He wasn't quite a billionaire there, but in his head, he never stopped being a billionaire. And that's what got him out the other side and helped him to recover his losses and got him to where he is now. Now, you can tell me all the stories that you like about, you know, about um, how he hasn't got that big good of business there to get. There's lots of stories out there. I don't care. He's way ahead of the vast majority of people on the planet financially. Would you agree? Absolutely. So it's a positive outlook. And it's believing that the universe has your back. So the thing about the law of attraction is what's your vision? Got to have a vision. What's your attitude and your focus? What's your strategy? And how much do you believe it? This is the piece that most people miss. You've got to have all these things in place. But the vast majority of people don't have faith. They're so busy worrying about what the worst that could happen. They're so busy projecting negative outcomes. They don't have faith. Faith and self-belief. Belief in themselves. Belief in a positive outcome. Belief that the universe has their back. Belief and faith and trust that it's all going to be okay. Knowing that it's perfect. Everything is always perfect. There is a reason all this stuff has come out for me right now. I am 10 times my results this year 10 times is that even a phrase don't know it is now i am 10 times my results this year i have shit going on that is scaring the crap out of me i am so far out of my comfort zone you have no idea way far way further out of my comfort zone than i have been in a long time because i am stepping up and going 10 times with my results financially with my impact in the, my influence in the world with everything i am not holding back 2019 is my year to accelerate i've been kind of building the um the foundations and now it's time to accelerate and when i have made that decision all my shit comes up so you need to do this work if you want to turn your nightmare into a fairy tale another thing that you must do is understand that our monetary system not money but our monetary system is a very low vibration I want you to think about that. Think about our monetary system, the fact that it's corrupt, the fact that it has enslaved humanity, the fact that it is set up, if we buy into the monetary system, it is set up for us to fail. It's manipulated. It is um, totally constructed for humanity to fail. Feel into that. Is that a high vibration or a low vibration? Of course, it's a low vibration, isn't it? So our monetary system is a low vibration. So if you are just focusing on the money as we know it, you're focusing on a low vibration. The fact is if you want true abundance, true wealth, you need to be focusing on a high vibration. You need to be vibrating at a high level. Now, if you've got a low vibration with the monetary system and you're vibrating at a high level, it's never going to work, is it? it total mismatch, totally out of alignment. You must get into alignment. So um, it's super important that you don't focus on the money. You focus on what the money will give you. So 
your dreams, your visions, as long as you're not holding back, your grandest vision for yourself, high vibration. Think about that. What's the greatest thing that you want in the world? What is it that you want to experience? What do you want your life to look like? What impact do you want to have? Because a business actually is meant to have an impact. It's got to add value. Your business has to have value and have a positive impact. It just has to. Any business in this uh, in this revolution that we're having at the moment, we're in the middle of a revolution, people. We are in the middle of a revolution. If you don't believe it, look at what, what's happening. We are on the tipping point of a massive shift in, a con in consciousness, in a massive awakening around the planet. We seriously are. And there's this wave that is supporting the healers and all, all the light workers and the people who want to make a difference. There is a way that is supporting us right now. But if we are not bold, you must be bold. Every entrepreneur must be bold and brave, must have a certain amount of courage. Now, in actual fact, courage isn't necessary when you have absolute faith. When you no longer care about what other people think, when you're no longer invested in the immediate outcome. So too many people have this short-term mindset. We've kind of been conditioned that way deliberately by our financial system because we can get credit to get things what we want. We don't have to, you know, put things on layaway anymore, as it's called in the United States, layby in, in Australia. Uh, we don't have to save for what we want anymore. That went out decades ago. <laughs> Just get more credit. The banks, more credit, more credit. Put us in a trance. Credit, have what you want now. We'll give it to you because we're so good to you. Have what, what you want now. We'll give you our money. We're good to you. It's like a lullaby, isn't it? In a trance. Okay, I can have what I want now. Yay. Give me more money. And then they go, oh, thanks very much. We've got you trapped, locked in. So do you see what's happening? Do you see what they've done with the monetary system? So what are your dreams? I want you to do that right now. Focus on your dreams. What is it that you want to create? And get rid of the short-term thinking. You've got to have a long term. It's a marathon, not a sprint. When you're focusing long term on your vision, the short term results no matter. The immediate situation and your reality no longer matters because you're focused on your long term vision. You are solution focused. You have an attitude of no matter what, can do whatever it takes. Right? So, um, this is what is essential in order to create the long-term results that you want. If you want long-term wealth, you've got to have strategies in place with the right mindset. You've got to be bold and you've got to be able to step up and be, instead of making decisions from a scarcity, fear mindset, make decisions from a possibility and abundance mindset because there is abundance everywhere. So whilst I do EFT and I do energy clearing to clear the blocks and the belief systems, the piece that most people miss is that you need to start stepping up and taking, making bold decisions about your future. It doesn't just happen because you want it to. It doesn't just happen because you're at the right vibration. There is a process. There are strategies. There is there are there is a science behind it so if you want the science john atteraf's amazing um he goes right into the science and then there's the emotional piece and the clearing the belief systems and all that kind of stuff and then there's the actions that you take it's being connected to spirit it's trusting that you are receiving the right inspiration to get the results that you want so, so many people come to me and talk about, um, you know, oh my goodness, I'm doing all this tapping and nothing seems to be happening. Well, are you making different decisions? Are you paying attention and building your awareness and coming deliberately 
taking action from a positivity and a, a positive outlook and an abundance and, an, and a possibility mindset. This is how you change your reality from fairy from nightmare to fairy tale. That's the key. So I really hope this has made sense. I really hope that everything that I have shared with you today. Absolutely, Sally, Sally Kalak, Sally Kalan. Um, Kathy, living the fairy tale. Love it. Everything is always perfect. Awesome. Um, uh, oh, Mary, wasn't, you know, to hear what happened to me. You know, I, I don't have a really hard luck story, but even, even so, the things that happened to me really impacted me psychologically and have kept me playing small. I've been playing small, been wanting to play a bigger game, know that I'm here to play a much bigger game, but it's deciding that I refuse to compromise in my life anymore. And here's one other thing that I realized um, just this week is that I have dedicated so much of my time to, uh, to trying to save other people from their limiting beliefs save other people from their financial story that I have not dedicated enough time and energy and resources to building my own seven-figure business. I've been so invested in helping others that I've put myself last. Now, that's not to say that I don't have an amazing life. I have an amazing life. But there is so much more that I want to build. My dreams are like this big, this big, off the screen, massive. They're my vision and my dreams for my future. They are never going to come to life if I don't put myself first. Um, a trip that I had with um, uh, with millionaires called the Unstoppables a couple of years ago, I took a, um, a trip on a think tank to Brazil and I was immersed in an environment with all these millionaires and billionaires. It was so intense. And very um, and and brought so much awareness to me about where I was not stepping, up, where I was not playing a big game. And one of the things that I took out of it is, if you want to give a million dollars, if you want to contribute a million dollars, you better be making two million dollars. You can't help anybody else until you help yourself. But I have been so invested in this good Samaritan identity that I have. Again, it's our identities that also impact our results, right? I was so invested in this good Samaritan identity that I forgot to take care of me. And I'm not doing that anymore because I can't save anybody. You, you, there is nobody coming to save you. You have to save yourself. You have to put in the hard work and the energy. You have to make decisions from a different headspace. You have to build the awareness. You have to do the work. I can support people and I will be by taking my message to the world. But by the same token, I can't do it for you. And that's where I went wrong. I've been trying to do it for people. Not my job. Not my job. Wish I could. Wish I could just snap my fingers and it'd all be fucking perfect for all of you. I really wish I could, but I can't because it's your journey and it's not my job to decide your journey. It's not my job to do it for you. That's up to you. So I really hope this has been helpful. If it has, give me some thumbs up, some love hearts um, and let me know. Authenticity. Yes, we have to be authentic. Oh, Kathy, thank you so much for for bringing that up. Because as a final, uh, as a as a final message, absolutely. And you know, do you know how much how valuable authenticity is? Do you know how valuable showing up from an authentic, real space is in a world that is so inauthentic, that is manipulative and coercive? authenticity is worth millions you showing up as authentic and real is worth millions to you seriously i'm not joking because people you will build a sense of trust and faith uh, and a relationship with people relationship is gold 
that will serve you so well to help you build wealth. That is absolute gold. So thank you for sharing that, Kathy, because it's a very, very good point. So do hope I've added value. If you do want to jump on board with my four-week Money Mindset Mastery program, $97 Australian, so it's going to be cheaper for you guys in the States. Um, you, it, What it is is four weeks we get on a call every Wednesday morning, 9 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Not ideal if you're in Europe. That's kind of like friggin' early hours of the morning, unfortunately. But there will be, it will be recorded. There will be replays. I will be working with participants directly on the call um, for uh, the, those four weeks. And, uh, and we do it live. And then if you can't make it live, the replay so that's just 97 bucks so if you would like to participate in that good pat you're feeling the shift we do have to be real oh thanks mary you're gorgeous um so um uh yeah just um private message me so private message me from uh, at Liberate Humanity TV or if we're connected on Facebook, then private message me through there. Let me know that you would like the link. I haven't done a sales page or anything like that. Uh, I, I, all I've done is um, oh, if you prob if I, I will upload this to my blog and I, there will be a link below here if you're watching this from my website, from my blog. Uh, and you can click on that and pay the 97 bucks and then email me. So email me that you've paid. I will, um, you'll have my email address or message me. Let me know that you've paid and I can, um, it starts, it starts next week. So it starts next Wednesday and we can start to shift your mindset around money to clear out those blocks. The discovery process is so essential and uh, we can do it together. It's so much more fun when it's together, but be warned, it will be freaking intense. You've got to be prepared to really go to those places that are uncomfortable and I will hold space for you. We will all hold space for each other because we're doing this together. This is about us working together to create the shift, to create heaven on earth for ourselves and for everybody else on the planet. So love you all so much. Thank you for joining me either live or on the replay. Please let me know what your biggest takeaway was from today. Did you have a big aha moment like I did this week? Um, and what are you going to do now? Because remember, what you do from this point forward is what will dictate your results in a month's time, in six months' time, in 12 months' time. You can completely transform your life in six to 12 months by making one decision differently today. Just one decision. What is that going to be? So look forward to working with you in the Money Mindset Mastery Breakthrough Program uh, and look forward to seeing you next week. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.